Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back. Today I thought I'd like to do a little tutorial on the subject of weathering. And the subject of this weathering is this wagon here. This is the Triang Hornby 16 ton mineral wagon. Now, uh, the 16 ton mineral wagons got everywhere in British Railways days. Um, so, if you model the 50s, 60s, 70s, even the early 80s, you can use one of these. The Triang Hornby version is, it's fair to say, not the best. Um, the decoration is quite crude. It uses a standard Hornby chassis, which has this odd sort of thing that looks, I guess, almost like a footboard, um, presumably to strengthen it in case little Eustace is playing rough. Um, the main advantage of it is that it's really cheap. I picked this one up for £3 at a model railway exhibition recently. But it could be better. Here's one I prepared earlier. This one's been painted, weathered, the chassis has been altered a bit. Um, but I have done nothing to this that a beginner could not do. So, let's have a look. So, step one. Let's take the wheels out. Now, um, this is really easy on these actually because it's quite a flexible plastic, so you just sort of bend the um, bend the frame outwards gently, and um, there you have it. That wagon ain't going nowhere. Next up, let's get to work on that footboard. Now uh, I'm going to start out with these. These are an absolute essential in my toolbox. Really could not do without them. Um, it's a pair of clippers, which these these things will go through anything. Um, I, I, I honestly, best thing I ever bought. Um, and, and you can hold me to that later on. Um, as you can see, just absolutely snips through that plastic easily and sends it pinging off all over the living room. Okay, so the clippers have done the worst of that. Um, I'm just going to tidy it up with this here. Now this is um, this is just a standard craft knife. You can get these from any DIY shop or craft shop. Um, they sell them for about a pound. Uh, this is a smaller one. Um, and they're great. These are another of those essentials. Once you have one, you'll wonder how you did without it. So, let's uh, see if I can do this without embarrassing myself. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, oh. Um, this might take a while. You, you might want to, uh, to talk amongst yourselves for a bit. All right, that's done. Um, yeah, I managed to get that off and also not cut any of my fingers off, so I'd call that a win, wouldn't you? Um, the final tool I'm going to use here, for now, is this. Now, this is uh, just a standard file, a small file, the sort of thing that jewellers use. Um, again, this is a phenomenally useful tool. Um, there we go. I'm just going to get in and tidy up that brake shoe as well. There we go. Now to do the same on the other side. I'll spare you. There we go. That's the other side done. Um, I actually managed to do the other side using only the clippers and, and the file. Um, so, you know, that's, that's um, something you can do if you're careful. Um, I pop the wheels back in, and as you can see, that looks a that looks a whole lot tidier. So next step, painting. Right. So I'm going to do something a little bit odd, a little bit unconventional with this. Um, the great thing about the Triang Mineral Wagon is that the colour comes from the plastic. It's not painted grey. It 
is grey, um, if you follow. Now, the reason this is useful is because with this, I wanted to sort of create a really kind of a, a really grotty mineral wagon. It's been bumped about, hasn't been to the paint shop in possibly years. Um, you know, wagons like this did not receive a lot of TLC. So what I am doing is I'm going to paint this using acrylic paints. I don't have any particular preference uh, in terms of paints. Uh, this is um, Citadel Rhinox Hyde. Uh, this is Rail Match, if you, which if you can get hold of it, they do a good range of model um, model railway enthusiast paints. Um, I'm rambling a bit. Um, oh look, here's my palette. Uh, which is, you know, in line with uh, the um, general distaste for single-use plastics is some old model railway packaging. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, I am just sort of blobbing on the paint. Now... As you can see, I am not trying to avoid mixing them up. If anything, I want them to be mixed because the thing about rust is it's not all one color. It's, you know, it's, it's browns, it's oranges, yellows, reds, purples, gray. Um, just that's that's what I want to roughly capture here. I'm making no attempt whatsoever to avoid mixing the colours on the palette either. I'm just blobbing this on with a fairly large paintbrush. I'm going to just put a little bit on the chassis there. Um, because the chassis would rust as well, probably not as much as the body. Um, fun fact about coal is that it's not only heavy and bumpy, uh, it's slightly acidic, so it tended to rot the steel bodies of these wagons. Now, I think in the interests of not boring you with my endless talk about uh, metal oxides, We'll uh, skip to the end. There we go, painted inside and out. I'm like Bob Ross, if Bob Ross gave up on life and just started smearing paint everywhere. Let's leave that to dry. Okay, well that's, um, that's, that's mostly dry now. So now we can get on to the next step. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just using this cocktail stick to scrape the paint away. Now the great thing about acrylic paint is that it, um, it dries really quickly and it works with, uh, you can work it with water. You don't need um, thinners or turpentine or anything stupid like that. And of course, you can do this with it. Um, I mean, you can do this with enamel paint, actually. Uh, I've seen this technique used very successfully, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm just doing it this way. I believe enamel paint is uh, is a little harder to get off. But yeah, in a sense, what I'm doing here is kind of... Um, I, I guess you could almost call it um, anti-weathering. In that I'm sort of slowly, gradually, I'm, I'm taking the paint off rather than uh, rather than putting it on as is normally the case when you weather something so oh 
and you can use um, you can use all sorts of tools for this. Uh, I'm using a cocktail stick because it's it's sort of fairly soft. You have a great degree of control, and it's not like you know, it's not like they're expensive or anything hard to come by. Um, some people I've had some people use a screwdriver for this. I've I've done it myself. Um, the disadvantage is that it can scratch the plastic. Um, well, if you consider that a disadvantage, of course. I mean, these wagons did tend to take a lot of bumps um, during their lifetime. So, you know, it's not like... It's not like it's unrealistic to... Um, to uh, have the plastic all marked. Actually, um, what they would tend to develop during their lifetimes is um, from having like just really heavy minerals um, poured into them day in, day out, they tend to sort of, um, they tend to kind of bow outwards. They tend to be kind of bumpy. Um, there we go, let's just get in these little crevices there. Um, which no manufacturer has attempted to replicate, I guess, because they feel that um, they feel there's a wagon that's sort of a little bit unrealistic, sort of unbowed, um, would be uh, less incongruous than a whole row of identically damaged wagons but uh, who, who knows who knows I'm just sort of um, I'm just sort of rambling here this seems to be a pattern in this video so uh, just going to um, let's 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 do a little jump cut to the end here because I'm pretty sure you've just been staring at my my hands there we go that is complete i say that as soon as i finish this video i'm probably going to decide i hate it and start all over again but um whoo. as you can see i've sort of gone over the um all the various panels kind of you know scratched off the uh the brown kind of trying to leave it in I've, I've sort of tried to leave it in the sort of nooks and crannies there as if to suggest that you know moisture has gathered there and uh, and rusted the metal i haven't scratched the inside for the simple reason that these wagons would typically not be painted on the inside as as is my understanding um because you know the minerals would scratch the paint off and you know you didn't want flakes of paint in your coal. Nobody wants that. So that is the first stage. Join me next week when I will be showing you some more easy weathering techniques to finish this off. So see you then.